In the first month of owning a Shaper Origin, I spent all my time testing out different materials, techniques, and project types, and no time at all cleaning up after myself or organizing any of the accessories and tooling that I've geared up with. I still haven't cut out my foam insert for the accessory sustainer. I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to do this super fun project. What really happened was a project that took a lot longer than I was expecting, with all kinds of unanticipated problems to solve. I imported the workstation accessories kit files from Shaper Assist into Inkscape, the free open source vector drawing app. I figured out pretty quickly that the scale was off. The parts were measuring out about a third smaller than they should be, and I figured out that Shaper's files were made in Adobe Illustrator, which sets the resolution to 72 pixels per inch, where Inkscape sets theirs to 96 pixels per inch. There's my 33% difference. Trying to simply change the resolution caused Inkscape to crash every single time. Uh, my hack around that was to export the Shaper files as an Inkscape SVG and then change either the resolution or the scaling of the new file. I spent hours altering app and file preferences as well as measuring the physical parts against the drawing to confirm correct sizes. Once my software problems were solved, I did a test cut on the 18 by 24 sheet of quarter inch ply that I used for a jig. I did shallow inside cuts of the parts and checked the layout with the actual parts. With the design more or less validated, I cut out the inside of the jig. The foam was a really tight fit, which is great because it needs to stay put while you're cutting. Uh, with it in place, I attached spacer blocks under the ply and clamped the whole thing down to the table to keep the jig stable. I didn't do a great job of placing my shaper tape and I had lost some when I removed my test cut. I got a low accuracy scan warning, added more tape, and tried again. Some of the original tape didn't get recognized by the scan. After my test cut, I ran the sander over the jig to clean up the fuzz and ended up sabotaging myself by defacing the tape. After finally getting a usable scan, I set my grid and imported my file to the workspace. That's one thing that did work easily since I had placed the cutout inside of a guideline rectangle that matched the width and bottom edge of my jig. Before cutting, I had to check the paths in the file and make sure they were set to either pocket cuts or inside cuts. It took multiple passes to reach the full depth of most cuts. The last little scrap of foam from pocket cuts has a nasty habit of sucking up into the base's vacuum port. I had to stop cutting several times to unblock it. It took about an hour of continuous cutting to finish the whole file.
the cutout for tape rolls goes completely through the foam insert, which is way beyond the cutting depth of the one inch long bit I was using. The insert itself is bilaterally symmetric, so after finishing all of the other cuts, I flipped the insert in the jig and then re-imported the cutout file and placed a mirror image of it by changing the scale's width to negative and then after that I just made a couple of inside cut uh, passes on just the tape cutout part. I had originally failed to change the text in my file to a guide path, so the only depth instructions I had were handwritten on the test cut. I went back and fixed that in my file, so now depth guidance is visible on the tool screen. With everything cut out and all of my bits and accessories in place, I found that I'd transposed the locations for the angle guide lock knob and my eighth inch collet. I can live with it, but I did change the design to put the knob right by the guide. The file and the project are on Shaper Hub. The links to the project and Inkscape are naturally in the video description.